So I'm sitting down today with Lisa Genova. Um, you are the author of the New York Times bestseller, Still Alice, and the most recently released Left Neglected. So thanks for talking with us today. Oh, you bet. So you've kind of taken two worlds, and that is the clinical world and the world of fiction, and you've blended them together. I mean, you successfully did it in Still Alice. You've delighted fans again with Left Neglected. What is it like to kind of take those two and just create this fluid story? Well, it's exciting for me because it really sort of takes my previous life and background, which was very clinical and very analytical, um, and it melds it with sort of my, my new life as a creative person and as a writer. And so it's a thrill for me to be able to take that old life and that passion for how does the brain work and how mm -hmm. does it affect who we are and how we express ourselves as human beings into a whole story of us as human beings. Um, Oliver Sacks has this great quote that says, to study um, disease, we learn about anatomy and physiology and biology, but to study a person with disease, we learn about life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope to accomplish with my stories. It's the melding of disease and biology with the story about a human being and mm -hmm. why do we care about that person. So what was it about Left Neglect? Because you've got still Alice. It comes out in 2009, hits New York Times bestseller list. And that was about... Alzheimer's, which is somewhat familiar to some people, some, are, you know, still on the brink of understanding it. But then you take this condition that we really don't know a lot about. And you, again, like I said, fluidly just wrap the story around it. What was it about that as you were approaching the story, writing it? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, you know, it's interesting. Still, Alice came from a very personal place. Mm -hmm. My grandmother had Alzheimer's and that really affected me deeply and that's where the that story grew from with left neglected it wasn't so much a personal place it was more from my previous background as a neuroscientist for years as a student and then as a trained neuroscientist i always i came across very regularly little snippets and stories about someone with left side neglect. It's also called unilateral neglect or hemispatial neglect. It's, even the name of the condition <laughs> doesn't sound like anything you'd ever heard of. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it would always be a very brief story about a person in a doctor's office who had no recognition of the left side of anything. And so when asked to draw a clock, she'd only draw the numbers 12 through 6 and think she'd drawn a whole clock. Or she'd be asked to draw a flower and would only draw the petals on the right side. Or someone would be asked to circle all of the A's on a page, scattered all across a, a page would be a bunch of letters, and, and would only circle the A's on the right-hand side. And that's all you'd know. Mm -hmm. There's also, again, bringing Oliver Sacks into our conversation, um, in his book, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, which is a book I read in my 20s, mm -hmm. there's a very short, I think it's two or three page story about a man who every night would feel this, this uh, disembodied leg in bed with him. It, he called it a corpse leg and thought someone was playing a trick on him, putting a dead leg in bed with him and horrified he would go to throw the leg out and of course it's his leg he has left side neglect and he'd go out with it and fall out of bed every night and that's the end of the story and so each time I'd come across these little snippets I'd think but wait how does this person live like yeah. what does this person do in their relationship their job how do they get dressed how do they eat um so what is their life like was what I always thought. And so it was more curiosity than a personal history of knowing someone with this. Mm -hmm. So it was a curiosity that I thought, wow, I'd really love to explore what this condition is and find out what it's like to live with it.